Hello friends, we are back again to with our discussion on T.S. Eliot's poem, The Wasteland. We have already done two sections, successfully I think you have understood, The Burial of the Dead and A Game of Chess. Now you see, I have told you, I have already told you, you have to be a bit careful about the articles used, The Burial of the Dead, A Game of Chess. Okay. Now the third, and I have already, the significance of the use of articles I have already explained to you. Now, the, now this, the, what we, are, we have been doing now, in our last two classes, the fire sermon. We have been discussing the fire sermon. So in the fire sermon, two thirds of the work has already been done. I think that you remember, the, now the most important uh, personality in the poem, the protagonist in the poem. That is what is uh, left out, left, and we have to discuss that in detail today. So you can see these pictures. We will come to that later. But let's have a, what I'm, I must say, a quick review of what we have, what we have been doing in the last two classes. You remember I told you the fire sermon. The title is taken from Lord Buddha's fire sermon. That is. Lord Buddha is exhorting his disciples not to fall victim to excessive desire. Desire is the cause of all sufferings in this world, all the evils in this world. Not any desire, but excessive desire. So we have to put it down, whatever it is, or we have to sublimate that. There are two ways of uh, getting out of this excessive desire. One is suppress it. And the second one is you, uh, you, you sublimate it make it something uh, what, is, what is called uh, a spiritual, you know, that also we can do. So we have seen that uh, going through this, the fire sermon, we have seen some frames one after another. The first one is, that is, the physical reality of the wasteland. We see that comparison and the contrast between terms of old days, the glorious days, inexplicable splendor, and of Ionian white and gold. You could also see on the banks of the river Thames at the time of Spencer. The Spencer's Thames, when Prothalamian was written, you know, that was a place where was a venue for meeting of royal people, royal couples, royal romance, aristocratic people, noble people, people who have got supposed to, well, who, who supposed to have values, and he gave importance to values and so on. See, now you can see the picture, sorted picture, it is infested with rats, then waste, and uh, uh, it is frequented by uh, loitering agents of, loitering agents of city directors, they come with their nymphs and they depart. Uh, there is no trace of them, other testimony of summer nights, you don't find anything. Once upon a time, it was a place for summer festivals, you can see. But now it's nothing of that sort, it's a sordid place. And then we saw, as we proceeded, we saw that there, that there is, by the waters of Lehman, I sat down and wept. So here you say, already saw, I have already shown you how the cubistic, or the uh, cubistic tendencies in painting, that has been used by T.S. Eliot in this one single line, if you take, you can see that. See, three cubes you can see. What are those? First, Eliot saw on uh, Mr. H. Second, the Jews in, the ba in Babylon, Jews in Babylon crying for their, their um, motherland, Sion. And the third is the Fisher King himself. The sufferings of the Fisher King, see. All the three come together and then uh, you get a picture of that. And then we proceed, you find that it is again interested with the dead bodies, white, low, uh, naked dead bodies, and uh, you also saw that uh, that uh, dry bones cast in a uh, little garret, see, rattled by the rats, totally, it's a rat, the, the, the main character in this, the person with them and the surroundings, you find the, the rat, the rat is the, uh, the, the VAP, so to say, in this, in the wasteland. And then you for further you saw uh, that is on a winter evening while I was fishing uh, the, in the, by the dull canal. I was fishing in the dull canal. See? So that is fishing, I told you, Fisher King, his, uh, his yearning to get back uh, 
his rejuvenation, lost the fertility, and he wants to get healed. And uh, in many rituals you will find, or many Catholic, uh, not Catholic but Christian denominations, you will find the, the a vigorous fish is a symbol of life. Especially I told you in certain altars, in front of altars, you will find a very vigorous, very vigorous fish, the, turning like this, you know, with great energy. That is a symbol of energy and uh, youth and uh, also what, what, what we must uh, a kind of rejuvenation. So, so understand that. If you look at that, you feel like uh, getting added energy. You see, that is like not like drinking boost. Uh, no, no, don't consider it like that. But it is not. Don't consider it like drinking boost or something like that. But it is spiritual. Look at that. So that is the point that you have to keep in your mind. And further we go, we see he speaks about musing over the king, my brother's truck and the king, my father's death. That is personal tragedies of the Fisher King. That could also be applied to uh, the personal tragedies of uh, the Eliot. That is how it, it goes now. And then when we further you go, you will find that. Uh, and then I, what I have done is, I told you know, that there uh, is that the Thames songs of the, the laments of the uh, Thames daughters we have brought in here because there you find one lament is for the present sordid situation, the other lament is for the lost glory. Like for example, the one lament begins like this, the, the river sweats oil and tar. The other begins like Elizabeth and Lester beating moves like that. I hold red and uh, peels of so, uh, bell, uh, white towers, uh, rippling, uh, the energetic, uh, energetic waves, rippling, you can see. That is it. So, one is for the present situation and the other is for the lost glory, memory and visit. Throughout the boy you will find this, throbbing between two lives. That is, one is memory and the other is this. Uh, understand that, yes. One is for the lost glories, the nostalgia, and the other is for the future, uh, thinking about the future or hoping that something will, uh, something better will happen. But at the same time, you should know, at one place, T.S. Eliot has said, wait without hope, for hope will be the hope for the wrong thing. That's another thing, I just, uh, I reminded you of this now, in your life also, you can apply this, wait without hope, for the hope will be the hope for the wrong thing, yes. Now we are coming back to this, he said, again he said, those two sections we have brought here and immediately after that you find that, that Sweeney is coming at my back from time to time I hear the sound of horns and motors that which will bring, which will bring, which, sorry, which brings a Sweeney to Mrs. Porter, oh the moon shone bright on Mrs. Porter and her daughter, they watch their Feed in soda water. So then I told you it's a bundle, you see. You have lots of references out there. Mom, uh, Andrew, Andrew Marvel is there, then the soldier song is there, then you have got the Diana, you have got the Diana, you have got Diana and the and the acting, acting. See, so and his own. So his own personal <coughs> life. Uh, all these things mixed together. It's a bundle you can see. And immediately after that you find the grey lad washing his feet. That is the contrast. In one place we have, we have got the soda water, washing soda water. In another place you have got this uh, <coughs> washing the feet by the grey lad just before entry into the grey chapel. And that washing is accompanied by celestial songs sung by innocent children in the dome of the chapel. Kupor, understand Kupor. In fact, this chanting, chanting, chanting heavenly music, celestial music. Okay. And then you remember I cut uh, a few lines from cut and paste. <laughs> that in modern computer language, they say cutting and pasting, copying and pasting. What I did was, you know, that's what I think. You can uh, you you can go through that and you can make your own know, suggestion. That's a different thing. But uh, what I have done is, from that line onwards, that is from the what the thunder said, line, a woman drew her long 
ply her out tight and fiddled uh, whisper music on those strings and then bats with baby faces uh, crawling down a blackened wall, whistling and beating their wings and then upside down in the air where towers uh, tolling from their bells keeping the hours and also from empty system and exhaust and wells always a singing. That's horrible you now that atmosphere of horror is created just before the entry. So so the grave maker has to suffer undergo all this. Only then he can enter the uh, the great, great chapel and ask the right question. And asking the right question one after another, go on asking the question, finally he gets the right question and this will heal the Fisher King. So that is the Fisher King with, within this Okay, and then also I said, you know, in this decayed hall, in this, in the faint moonlight, the grass is singing over tumble in the graves. Uh, then uh, by the, about the chapel, there is the chapel, the only the wind's home, nobody else is going there, it is totally destroyed. See, dilapidated, only the wind's home, it has no windows, the Lord sings and dry bones can harm no one. So after that, we have taken all those lands and the pasted it here, just after the washing. While the washing is going on, this horror scene, for most probably might have come in front of, like a hallucination, in front of the mind's eye or the vision of the green light. Isn't it? Yeah. Then we have got a five series of frames. So I can say lust, burning, 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 burning. One we saw Sweeney and Mrs. Potter. Second one we saw Philomena, that again repeated. It was there in the second section. Now again we are coming here one more. So that means how much importance the poet has given to that particular image. That's what you must see. That symbol, symbol. That is Philomena symbol. Yes. And the third we saw under the brown fog of a also yes, under the brown fog of a winter noon. So we started with the dawn. Remember. Under the brown fog, in the dawn, I see crowds of people walking over London Bridge. So many, I had not thought that that, that, that London so many like that. That so like that. Now it here begins what? Here you have got what you got under the brown fog of a winter noon. Yes, there I find the ingenious the Smirna Merchant asking the protagonist and who is the protagonist we are going to see? Uh, there is uh, luncheon at the Metropole and followed by a weekend in the in the yes, uh, Cannon Street Hotel. Yes, to lunch at Cannon Street Hotel followed by a uh, followed by a week in the, the Metropole. So that is very notorious, so to say. We can say notorious in order commerce because now it is not considered as an offense. It's only a kind of sexual orientation. That is a homosexual a burning. And now uh, after the first two, three. Fourth one, we say you find the typist and the land agent's clerk, car bungler, the young man car bungler, a small land agent's clerk, clerk with one gold stair, one of the low one which etc. etc. On which assurance is like a silk cat on a bag for I told you the comparison is like Ambani holding a mobile phone. So, in the hands of Ambani, mobile phone has so sure. Because he is everything for the mobile phone, like that, for Bradford Miller, Silk Hat, for the Bradford Miller, it was everything, because they were the people who, he was the, he was the man who, who processed it and made it and uh, in this fashion, it in the form of a hat. So, it has got that much of assurance, but of course, it is used to hear ironically, ironically, there is no doubt about that. Yes, the entire passage is like that, it is ironic. It is filled with the biting irony, we can say, as we can see line by line if you take it. Okay. And then you have a fourth and the fifth and the last one is we saw trams and dusty trees, highway bombing, etc. After the events, he wept, I may not come and watch it. So that is the fifth. So see this, and then comes in burning, burning, burning. In between, we have seen uh, the this music. Sorry, before that, you saw. In that uh, typist episode, typist episode in three places you can see uh, the protagonist appears. And the, who is the protagonist? It's none other than this man here. You can see. It's, uh, I have downloaded this from the net. You can also do that. There's nothing new as well 
I nothing original about this because I just downloaded it. And also you can see that uh, young Tiresias. This is Tiresias, the protagonist. Old man with the wrinkled female was here. But here it is not wrinkled. He is here, he is young. He is the cooperating snakes and this fellow, like you for example, like school children throwing uh, stones at the dogs, you know. They are playful. Or the frogs. You, know, you have seen the story you now. Even you are studying in the uh, to second stand, third stand, and there was a will. Well, in the will, uh, in the, there was a small lake. In the lake, there were some frogs, and children used to throw. And uh, I like that. That mischief. Playing mischief is part of children's character. Maybe it's like that. Otherwise, who would dare to go near cooperating snakes and beat them? You know the story of Tiresias. Lot of things about. Lot of things are about uh, said about Tiresias. Tiresias was a Theban, Thebes, see that's the city in Greece. So Thebes, he was a Theban, like uh, like uh, we, we say that the, we sometimes we say you are identified with a particular ta town or a city, no? like that. He is identified with that city, Theban. He used to sit by the walls of Thebes and then uh, prophesy. Prophesy. His main business was prophesying. So that is his uh, duty, so to say. That is, uh, that, that is ordained upon him. That you should do it like that. Just as everybody has. For some reason, I used to think that I have been, it's my duty to teach. You know, <laughs> like that. As, as I can say, no, I have taught in that college and this college. I have sat by a tutorial college and <laughs> explained things to students. That's what I can say. Okay, that's the different thing. So here the story is like this Tiresias, Theban, and then uh, one day he was uh, walking uh, through a forest and he saw cooperating his snakes, as you can see that. He beat them with his staff and they crushed him. And the male Tiresias became a female Tiresias with all the paraphernalia trappings of a woman. Then after several years, the same place, he passes through the same place and then he sees he cooperating snakes and but he leave he leaves them free. So it is said in some stories, in some versions of the story, they bless the man therefore they he got back his masculinity. But there are some remnants, residues of female life in him. That's why he says wrinkling to female press. Understand? And now continuing the story again, his story, uh, we can see there was a there was an argument between Zeus and Hera, God Zeus and Hera. And then uh, he was consulted. The God Zeus asked uh, the prophet, that is uh, Tiresias, who gets the maximum pleasure in a sexual union. So he sided with the Zeus and therefore Hera blinded him, cursed him. But Zeus immediately compensated that uh, by giving him the mental vision, that is prophesying, said so that you will become a great prophet. There's another story, another version of the story. The 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 what, dispute was between Jove and Juno, I and mean, the same thing. The question was referred to Tiresia. Tiresia sided with Jove, and Juno blinded him. But Tiresia, sorry, Jove gave him longevity, so so longevity of life, and he lived seven generations. He says he saw seven generations. Says so. And then uh, what happens is uh, gave him this gift of prophesying and also long life. That is. So how did he become blind? This is one story. Version, different versions of the story. How did he become male and female? Male, from male to female, female, from female to female, male. So you can say he was, he is the first transgender in the in literature. Is there any other transgenders in literature? No, this is a, Man, woman, man, woman. See? And therefore, you can see, he says, what are the lines that speaks about, uh, speaks about Tiresia? There are nine lines. And there are three places also. Three places. The first, uh, the first place is, say, we can see where uh, immediately after that, it says, no, after the at the violet hour when the eyes and by turn of whirl from the rest when the human engine waves like a taxi uh, throw being waiting, I Tiresias comes there. So the beginning of that 
the first step uh, that is she is getting released from the office so i say i tarisias oh i tarisias do blind throbbing between two lives so you should know blind he is blind okay throbbing is throbbing 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 between two lives there are two lives sir throbbing between two lives i tarisias do blind throbbing between two lives lives old man yes old man with female breast female as uh, so old man i tarisias do blind throbbing between two lives old man with the wrinkled female yes. old man wrinkled wrinkled female breast can see there's a contradiction there apparently there's a contrast isn't it can see now look at this these lines the first reference to the protagonist is this one blind two lives throbbing between old man and wrinkled female can see then next one is we can see after this out of the bed bed out of the window pages this bed had drying combinations touched by the sun's last rays uh, that is uh, upon the on the divan at night her bed uh, on the divan at piled up at night her bed what stocking slippers camisole sun stays and then says i tyrese a old man with the female dogs is old man he again says old man he is not old man he repeat it old man So you can see now how old is he? You can see him on this. So old man with the female ducks perceived the scene. That's the thing. Perceived, perceived, perceived the scene and foretold the rest. Perceived the scene and foretold the rest. And I too awaited. I too awaited the expected guest. some people are making one of the saying that he he is a peeping tom he is waiting for what is what is happening with some what i must say anxiety you know yes, that is and uh, that's let's forget about that don't be don't be let us not say such you know silly things here because we are discussing a very serious point that is the the waste land but ah uh, we can also have some comic relief right? there is nothing wrong in that i think yeah so Now hold on to the series. This is about the same thing. We can have some community like this. Perceived and foretold the way to the. Rest. Then the third reference begins when it's a law. Is it? Is it? We know now. What is? Ah, uh, there is exploring hands finds no defense. His vanity requires no response and makes a welcome of indifference. Then says, "I tire of this." I tell you, sir. Always he said, I tell you, sir. He is uh, what I must say. It's like a old thing, you know. I saw him so many times for like I tell you, sir. Old man, old man, with the uh, I tell you, sir, who have four suffered all. So he has four suffered, four suffered, four suffered all, and acted on the same bed of the man. Same place, and I put on the same bed of the man. I, Tiresias, who have four suffered all, and I put on the same bed of the man. I who have sat by thieves, that is, sat by thieves, that is his profession, sat by thieves below the walls, and walked among the lowest of the dead. That is, ah, okay. here. Lovers of the dead walk and walk among the lovers of the dead. That is Hades, the nether world, not the nether land, but nether world Hades. Now you see, these are some key words to explain uh, the identity. Yes, the Artha. That is in, in today's language we can say this is this is the Artha of walk. That is. What is the other of Tiresias? If you accept this is the other of Tiresias, you will also have to accept the fact that this is the other of Tiresias at the point. 
But at the same time, there is a distance. Now let's see what is it. So, I, I, Theresius, though blind, though blind, can see. So here, you know, say it's not anything great. Some days what happens when you are uh, under severe emotional stress, you can't see. Physically, you are blind, but you can see mentally. Your vision is clear, but yeah, physically you are blind. So that may be because, as I told you, Tiyasidhyat is physically blind. Physically, can I, how you can apply this to Tiyasidhyat himself? Who is the protagonist? Tiyasidhyat himself. Because you already have seen in the first section, my double. See that? My double. Says. Then, there are critics who say that eh? the speaker and the audience is the same person. But don't, please don't identify. So don't say that the same person doesn't mean that the identification, there is no identifying. You cannot identify the poet with the protagonist. That cannot be known. See, I give, I will give an example. See, a father. He plays a role in the birth of his son. But the son is not the father. Look at that. Father is a separate person, son is a separate person, like that. In this case, the poet creates a character. But that doesn't mean he is the poet. Understand? And if you consider it like that, we are going against the poetic soft yesterday. That is his impersonality. His impersonality theory. His objective orality theory. His what is a, the, the escape from emotion? Not expression of emotion, but escape from emotion. And also, it tells, means, supports the view of the third voice of poet. The poet creates a character through him he speaks, and that is the third voice of poet. You understand that? Yes? Yeah. So there you go. So, blind, now I am going to argue that both are same, but different. That always you should keep in mind. Now this blindness I am seeing can, can happen to any person. <laughs> then comes two lives. In the science says that in every human being there is a man and there is a woman. If they depends on the androgen and the estrogen ratio. If the estrogen is high, even, even the person appears, outwardly appears as a man, he, can, he behaves like a woman. If the, the, the same thing with uh, woman also. If the androgen is very high, high ratio, then he, she sometimes will behave like a he. So this is, a, and now you know transgenders, transgenders. Those 1922 probably when uh, Tiyasiri wrote this poem, there is no, uh, there may, there might have been transgenders, transgenders, but they were not recognized. But now like, so it's not a problem at all. Therefore you can say, he was, Throbbing between two lives. Yeah, but who? Our Tyrisia. So like that, PSLA 2 was throbbing between two lives. I am throbbing between two lives. You are all throbbing between two lives. Also. Then there is another throbbing. There is blindness and seeing throbbing between two lives. And there is one more throbbing that is what is the memory and this. Side. Throbbing between memory and the, this. Side. So the throbbing is actually. A very, very, very important word here. See that? So you can see throbbing between two lives, throbbing between two, two uh, sighting, sight and seeing, see through two faculties, throbbing between two faculties, you can say, throbbing between two lives, you can say, throbbing between two, one memory and the one desire. So this happens with us, this happens with us and it. This happens with the Tiresia. But always remember that the inverse is not the theory. So blind to lies from an old man. There is, when you are born, there is an old man in you. Because where are you going? You are going each day, you are approaching that old days. So that is also, there is nothing wonderful about that. See, perceived and foretold. Yes. So he received the data. And then the output, input and output. So I think you can also do that. And in this case, you can very well say 
that DSL will receive the data, the wasteland data. Rat, rats, uh, infested, rat infested area, uh, uh, oil and tar, and the canopy of the river totally destroyed once upon a time it was. It was, uh, what we must say, the canopy was formed by interlacing branches of the trees which were flourishing on both sides of the river. It was a wonderful side, a very beautiful side. It was a heartwarming side. It would give you much pleasure. But now the fingers of the last leaf clutch. The river's tent is broken. The fingers of the last leaf clutch and sink into the wet bank. So that is the situation. So, Photol, you can also photol, but you cannot photo like this. So there is a difference. Yes. So perceive the scene and photograph this. In the case of typist and in the case of the young man Garbangler, he perceives them. So in the poem, TSD perceives and photos. A waiter, yes. In the, there also you can see TSD is waiting. A waiter, like typist, yes. A waiter. Expected guest, who is the guest here as well as Eliot, the protagonist, Eliot, the poet is concerned, I would say that uh, is a little amiss you may feel, but it is the grave night. A waiter. Okay. Now don't identify the grave night with the typist, no, not the typist and then her lover. Yes. I for suffered, correct. That's okay. For suffered, man and woman. For man and woman. See that? Elliot also forced her his matrimonial misery after the first marriage, first marriage with Vivian Hale. So he forced her. Maybe indifference, maybe what I must say that uh, even uh, so there might have been, I don't know, there might have been some quarrels and things. Like matrimonial misery. Forced up at all. And I feel on the same bed of the event. Same bed of the event. See? Remember the first section? There I met one I knew and stopped in crying, Stetson, you who were with me in the ships in Mele. Mele is reference to the battle between Carthaginians and Romans. But now, you know, why does, why does he say, instead of Mele, why does he say, first of all, that is because all the words are the same. So in the same case, all these sexual unions are the same. That is what uh, this it is means by saying that first of all, same but not the man. And then comes his profession. I sat by thieves. Prophesying is my profession. And the poet is a pro, pro a poet is a prophet. Do you know? A poet is a prophet. In Latin is what is what is means prophet. A maker something, a visionary. So that is uh, again, say, for supper, same, same, the, the sad way, that is me. And now comes the last, walk oh, among the lowest of the dead. Yes, correct. Tiresias was consulted by Odysseus in Hades. Odysseus wanted to know how, what would, what would, what would happen to him and uh, the way how to go back to Ithaca and uh, make a reunion with his wife, Penelo. He consulted him. Now, this is a very tricky thing. That is, that is his urge for immortality. Every poet wants immortality. So, uh, Eliot thinks that even after my death, I will continue prophesying, prophesying in the other world. So, my, he is making sure, he is confirming his immortality. That is, even after death, he will live. Shakespeare writes you now in Psalm number, sorry, Sonnet number 55. Not marble, not the gilded monuments of princes shall outlive this powerful rhyme. That is, that is the that. WA, WBS created by Sandim. That is, an imperishable symbol. Isn't for what? Again, earthy for immortality. That's the thing. So that is that. So going through this passage, you can see the Tiresias passage is very important because there is lot of uh, what we must say similarities. At the same time, dissimilarities. Seem to be similarities, but dissimilarities. See that? 
Now what, what happens here, I told you, please, for heaven's sake, I did not say that TSLA this tiresias and tiresias TSLA. No. What I was trying to tell you is, these things are all applicable to the poet, to me, to you, to everybody. Everybody wants to be immortal, no? You don't want to be immortal because you are young people and you think that death is far, far, far away. It is not here, it is somewhere in the North Pole or South Pole. But for me, a person like me approaching his, uh, I don't want to reveal my age, see, you can guess. Now, when I would say that, now when uh, I am approaching my grave, I also want to uh, remain the mode. <laughs> it will not happen. But see, that wish is there. That desire is there. Isn't it? Yes, like that. So here, the poet, of course, has to. Not marble, nor the gilded monuments of princes shall have been this powerful rhyme Shakespeare or not. Like that, this is another way of saying that I will continue professing, I will continue writing poetry, I will continue exercising my vision even after my death. That is, where will he go, he doesn't know. But even after my death. Understand? Yes, the Tiresias passage is so beautifully constructed. You must read it. I must say. I must say at least 50 times. And if you like it, you should share this with your friends. See? With your WhatsApp friends or Facebook friends, whatever it is. So that I tell them to read this. Tell them to tell them to go through the explanation. No, it's one of the explanations that I have given. If you like it. Okay. Don't do it for publicity, but if you tell, like it, if you think that it is good, then share it with your friends. That's what I, that's all what I am trying to tell you. Okay, so after that, you are coming to the end of the fire sermon. There you have got what you got. This music cut by me upon the waters. Aerial song is lifted from the tempest and the, and the fixed ear. Now this is another technique used by uh, Tesla throughout the point, we can see now. That is, and Marvel, about 60 references of 40 of this, you can see that. see that. So that is, and with the great power, that is the thing. The convex, you don't think that it is in the outer convex, but it merges with the convex. That is the power of GSD. Yes. And then here you see, this music cut by me upon the waters, along the strand up. Queen Victoria Spirit, whose oh, city, city, I can sometimes hear by the walls of a public bar, public bar in the Lower Thun Street, the pleasant whining of a mandolin and a clatter and a chatter from within, where fishmen come to launch at noon, another sordid picture of the city, another sordid picture of the wasteland. Another sordid picture of the surroundings of a city and its surroundings. I can know the public bar, Lower Thames Street, a fish can come to lounge, a clatter and a chatter. Immediately comes the contrast. What is that? The glorious days where the walls of Magnus Martyr hold inexplicable splendor of irony and white and gold. So that is memory and they say, throbbing between two lives. So, I told you in every frame of this poem, there is a throbbing between two lives. There is time you will explain that later. When we come to the end of the discussion of the wasteland, we will consider this throbbing and see how it is passing through like a thread throughout the poem, providing it with the, the necessary unity. See that? That would be a kind of, I must say, restoring the, the fame of T.S. Eliot. In the face of those, some people always say that it is, it is, a, language, it is a poem that we cannot understand. When, the, when uh, the Westland appeared first, it was, the, some, com some comments were made like this, there is a new type of literature which nobody can understand. Another big uh, professor I told you, you know, somewhere I told you that I, I happened to listen to a talk. Then he says, 
you do, you break your window pane and take collect all those pieces into a bag and shake it and then put it down then you will see the waste <laughs> this is a unity as well but I tell you there is a unity but I will argue that like that let's look at the unity okay all right then there it is and then comes the last part in the last part you will find the per, the Elliot and the Fisher King Marji see that he said on mortgage science I can I can connect nothing with nothing the broken fingernails of dirty hands my people humble people who expect nothing la la so that is my people humble people that is the Fisher King he's maimed they are expecting something but they don't expect because they are resigned to the faith they think that there is nothing left. They think that there is no saving. They think that there is no redeem. They think that there is no great light. So, they said, expect nothing. La, la. Remember I told you, no? what is the, in the end of last part of my last lecture, I, I was quoting from the fifth section, the beginnings of the fifth section, isn't it? That is uh, probably you might have thought, or something had wrong with me, something had gone wrong with me. Isn't it? After the torchlight light, after the torchlight red on sweaty faces, after the frosty silence in the gardens, after the angry in stony places, the crying and the shout, the shouting and the crying, and then prison palace and the vibrations of thunder or spring of a distant mountain. He who was loving, living is now dead, we who were living. Dying with a little pressure. So that part, I wanted to project that part. That's why I started quoting from the beginning. So he who was living is now dead. Who? In that context it is Christ. But here it is the Fisher King. He who was living is now dead. Whatever the citizens of the Vishnu, we who were living are now dying. So that is the situation. So that is why the Fisher King here says, My people, humble people, who expect nothing? La la. What is la la? That is the sighing song. That is the sighing song. And at the same day, you can see that has got a personal reference to TSRE on Margate Sand. That is a, a seaside resort in Kent. Where he spent some time at that time also, he, he, he used his time for writing. Part of wasteland. Part of wasteland was composed here and part of wasteland was composed in, in La, La, oh, Lake Geneva. Yes. The Lake Geneva. There, there, was also, there was in a resort he was uh, recovering. So a convalescent period we can say. At that time he, he wrote some part of it and some part of it. Is. Some part of it he wrote in this resort. See that is sea, seaside resort in Kent. And there you see you say, what Margate Sands, very clear, physical, physical reality, Margate Sands. I can connect nothing with nothing, nothing with nothing. Do you see nothing? Do you remember nothing? Do you know nothing? Are you alive or dead? Are you alive or dead? Is there nothing in your head? Then the Hyacinth girl, you gave me Hyacinth a year ago, I, they, call, they called me the Hyacinth girl. But when we came back late from the Hyacinth garden, my eyes, I could not speak, my eyes failed. I knew nothing. Looking into the heart was light silence. Nothing. I said, you see nothing? Yes. So this lot of nothing there. So here was it. Margate said, I can connect nothing with nothing. And then he's slowly slipping into who is, who cannot, who cannot connect. Is it desolate or is, is it the author of this poem? Or is it the poet or is it the fiction king? Both. Both. If you did, I told you what to understand that part. He who was living is now dead. Practically dead. We who were living are now dying with a little patience. And then comes the thunderbolt. To Kartija came. That is Saint Augustine. Eastern philosophy. Saint Augustine. So you know Saint Augustine is burning with the lust. 
And wherever he went to satisfy his lust, his mother went after him, followed him. And she went on praying, years of prayer. The result is that she became St. Augustine. He became the, the what, what we must say, the, the uh, Augustine, Mr. Augustine. He, the, Mr. Augustine, the man burning with the lust, now he is venerated on the altar of the church, Catholic Church. Catholic Church are the same Augustine. So if you transform this and sublimate your lust, as I told you in the beginning, the desire, you become a saint. That is, to that we are coming. Understand? Yes. And then we see, and then, then to Karthi, I came. Burning. Burning, 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 burning. So that's all we can connect it with all those burnings in the poem. Just, just now we have discussed. Burning your swimming, burning your uh, terrius, burning your uh, utilities, burning your the typist and the. No, the typist is not burning, she is indifferent. The carbuncle, the hangman carbuncle, and the burning of but those who violated the innocence of those maidens. So that burning, 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 burning. At the same time, there's another meaning. You can burn down the whole thing. See? You can suppress. Both ways you can interpret it. That is the beauty of the wasteland. That's why very often people say we don't understand them. But you see the connections. Then definitely you will try to, you, will get, you will get the point. Yes? Okay, then finally he says, Oh Lord, thou pluckest me out. Oh Lord, thou pluckest. So it needs spiritual help. You want to burn down something? You want to suppress something? You want to sublim sublimate something? Some of these excessive desires? In both ways you can. Suppressing also you require and sublimation also you require the help of God Almighty. Oh Lord, thou pluckest me out. See, I was going after all this worldly pleasures, but you are acting, taking me back. You are using violence and fucking. Understand? Yes. Look, sometimes it's something, someday when now I said these things, I remember the violence of uh, uh, John Dunn's poem, violence. Yes. That's also for something good, spiritual. So in the same way, why not? The broadcast me out. So, and the last word, burning. 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 Oh. But you require the spiritual help. Understand? You require the help of God. To that end, we must work, we must strive. That is the message of this part of the poem. Also there is all, always you find you know, the spiritual undercurrent is running. You can see that. There is always a spiritual undercurrent in this poem. Okay? That is the saving spirit of this poem. That is the saving aspect of this poem. So, on this optimistic note, today, for today we say goodbye. Have a nice time. Enjoy. If you like my lectures, then you should do Share it with your friends in other colleges, other universities, if you like it. If, you, if not, you send a, 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 an email to me, Professor Thomas Matthew at gmail.com, criticizing me or uh, asking me or whatever you want. Okay? But no physical violence, please. Thank you.